Hello everybody and welcome to find out what's in Polinta's forest. Grab yourself a glass of water or a cup of tea and spend the next few minutes with me. And like I always tell you, what do I say? Don't believe everything you hear. Check the facts and please do your own research. And as soon as these butterflies bring us on in, don't you want to know what my butterflies are saying? What? What? Don't you want to know what my butterflies are talking? Yes, you do. Because I want to know. <laughs> Check this out, man. <laughs> I know. I need some new material. I like my butterflies, though. I have cool stuff to talk to you about. Actually, I have cool stuff to talk smack about. And I'm going to start with McDonald's. But I do have something really funny to tell you after the show. Well, actually, towards the ending of the show. So, let's get started with McDonald's. Done, McDonald's. Done, McDonald's. Dun, dun, dun. Now, I don't know what episode it was. Ah, oh, I just broke a wing on my butterfly ring. Okay, I'm going to have to be gentle with my right hand, you guys. Okay, listen. McDonald's CEO <laughs> touts changes. McDonald's is under intense pressure in a competitive industry. Now, they have sought to reassure its shareholders on Thursday that it's making changes to its food and service that customers want. Now, hold on a second. Now, you remember what episode was it? Where they said that they're going to change the ingredients of the chicken McNuggets and they're going to stop using process this and process that. Well, I didn't further research into it, but they never said what good stuff they were going to be putting in there. They just said what bad stuff they were supposedly going to be taking out. Mm -mm -mm. Now, the CEO, Steve Easterbrook, recounted adjustments. He's overseen since the job early last year, such as improving order accuracy. Order accuracy, we don't care about order accuracy. That's not the problem, okay? Also, toasting buns longer to improve the taste of burgers. Toasting buns is not the problem. And also, they want to launch an all-day breakfast menu. We do not care if we get to eat breakfast all day or all dang night, Mr. Easterbrook. What we care about is the ingredients that are going into those chicky, chicky, chicky McNuggets and the Big Mac. And that little lobster deal that you guys have coming out that I think costs like $9 or something. Uh-uh-uh. And he also said the company is working on more convenient ways for customers to get food, whether ordering with the kiosk, table service, or delivery. Okay, you know what? That focus, to me, is ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's nice. As far as marketing strategy and business, that's fine and dandy. I'm not knocking that. But I think the real people want to eat real food. What? Are you kidding me? Did you hear that bird just said? That bird said, if you want real food, then you better go somewhere else. Okay, stop it. You're about to get me in trouble. Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Yahoo plans to auction patents. 
Yahoo. Remember a couple of weeks ago when Yahoo shareholder was holding everybody a hostage with the fist clenching the money and talking all crazy and they settled for millions of dollars? Well, this is a little different, but here we go again. Yahoo is hoping to auction off most of its technology patents as a part of a purge. Remember that word, purge. That's a key word. Wait a minute, hold on. Let me stop here for a second. Because you know that movie uh, that's coming out? What is it called? The Purge? And I think this one is uh, The Purge After Midnight or something where it's not, I guess, the whole day or the whole weekend, but you could just kill, maim, do whatever the heck you want to do for 12 hours. <sighs> These movies are scary because you know 20 years after the movie, like I told you with Total Recall, then all of a sudden the movie is a reality. So let's just pray that that crazy purge mess does not become a reality. Anyway, it says here, that, uh, uh, that the patents are, you know, t t taking part here, but they have more than 3,000 patents that have already been issued and they're under approval for review. And the company says it hasn't set a minimum bid for the patent portfolio yet, but they intend to, uh, you know, retain more than 2,000 other patents. But yeah. They're auctioning off their stuff. So if they're auctioning off their patents, more than 3,000, there's something going on there. There is something going on there. Now it could be something really super, super good for them. It could be something super, super strange. Or it could just be something all together. That's your homework. Okay, let's see. What else do we have here? Oh, let's see. Now listen at this. This is interesting. Mexico City limits traffic for a third day. Here I go. <laughs> Remember that movie? The Crazies with Timothy Oliphant and what's her name? Rada Mitchell? All right, Mexico City is ordering... 40% of cars and trucks to stay off the streets, um, extending for a third day of traffic cutbacks aimed at lessening pollution. Under a rule in effect through June, one-fifth of the city's vehicles normally must stay at home on a weekday with the day determined by license plate numbers. Did you hear that? That is weird. Hold on a minute. Let me read that again. Under a rule in effect through June, one-fifth of the city's vehicles normally must stay at home on a weekday with the day determined by their license plate numbers. That is weird. But on Wednesday, smog stayed above one and a half times acceptable limits for a third straight day, meaning an additional 20% of vehicles can't be used on Thursday. Now the ozone is a key component of smog, which is reached almost 1.8 times the acceptable limit. Well, you know what? When a volcano erupts, and that few minutes that that volcano is erupting, it puts more mess in the air in those few minutes than our cars put in the air in 50 years of nonstop driving. So you can go look that up because that's the truth. Oh, and here, listen, this is, this is very interesting. You remember that Bart case? Um, you know, well, listen, uh, Bart settles case on excessive force. <laughs> Check this out. $1.35 million. This is unbelievable. Bay Area Rapid Transit agreed earlier this month to pay a San Francisco woman $1.35 million to settle a lawsuit alleging excessive police force. You know what? When is this 
I'm gonna beat you up, gonna stop. Don't they have tasers? And they're not supposed to tase you until you until you're dead. But what is ugh, this is just this is just crazy. This is just crazy. So listen, Bart Officer Nolan Pianta, who was named in the suit, said that the officers uh, took away Sheehan's purse after she refused orders to stop rifling through it. Okay, so she's sitting there going through her purse, and he said, Ma'am, stop. Stop right now. Don't rifle through your purse, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm warning you. If you don't stop rifling through that gosh dang purse, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> well, you know what? That ass whooping just cost. 1.35 million dollars it just doesn't make any dang sense it's just crazy moving right along um biotech firm here's another lawsuit biotech firm will pay 3.5 million dollar fine for animal abuse this is santa cruz one of the world's largest suppliers of antibodies used in research has agreed now okay wait 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 now, when they agree to pay these large fines, is that admitting guilt? When you just agree, when you just fold, it's like playing poker. When you look at your hand and finally you just say, I'm out. Does that mean that you're guilty? <laughs> so anyway, they agreed to pay 3.5 million and they canceled it's research registration in order to settle government allegations. Now, the allegations are that they not only mistreated goats, but they mistreated rabbits too at its Santa Cruz facility. So the settlement between Santa Cruz and their Biotechnology Incorporated and the U.S. Department of Agriculture also revokes the company's license to sell, buy, trade, and import animals. But listen, because this gets good. The USD, the USDA filed several complaints that listed violations ranging from failing to provide veterinary care to goats with wounds from coyote and snake bites or massive tumors and housing rabbits in cruel conditions including putting them in elevated cages. Look at, I can't even fix my face right now. Open doors or in small crowded cages. You know what? I was listening to a show the other night and I just want to say, if in fact you're going to raise animals for food, can you at least raise them in conditions that are humane and comfortable before you kill and eat them? I mean, even in Twilight Zone, to serve man, they fed Lloyd Bachner. They even let him smoke while he was laying in there waiting for them to, to cook him and eat him. I mean, good grief. How would you feel if you're in an elevator? The elevator capacity is, is just say for instance, is five people and there's 15 people in that elevator and you have claustrophobia how long is it gonna be before you start going crazy and you know and then you wonder why there's all these 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 animal mutilations and cow mutilations and all this precision cutting out their eyes and those all this kind of stuff you know, I heard a rumor. <laughs> I heard a rumor. I heard a rumor. You know who that you know who that song is from? This is your trivia question. She's got it. <laughs> Banana Rama. Remember? Back from the 80s? Yeah, I'm telling how old I am. I don't care. But anyway, you know, I heard a rumor that this planet is really a farm and the aliens, they're not coming down here to be friendly. They're coming to eat us. <laughs> well, you know what? Let me tell you something. 
if that's true, if aliens are really coming down here to mess with us, I'm safe. I'll be the last woman standing. You know why? Because I don't have no brains. They ain't gonna mess with me. They're gonna be after y'all crazy people. <laughs> they ain't coming after me. Anyway, I wanna talk about movies. Did you guys see um, Alice in Wonderland? This last one through the looking glass. What did you think about it? Because it says here that it bombed at the box office, but I guess you have to be into Alice in Wonderland to actually like it. But I liked it. I thought it was cute. I thought it was cool. I liked him flying through the air and give the time man his, his time clock thingy, thingy, thingy back. I thought it was cool. I liked it. And then it said that X-Men flops to the top. But listen, it says the X-Men installment opened at far less than 90.8 million debut of 2014's X-Men Days of Future Past. I thought X-Men Apocalypse was the bomb. But I know everybody hasn't seen it yet. So I'm going to be quiet because I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but man, that movie was freaking good. Well, there's one thing that I want to talk about um, real quick before I tell you this funny thing. I know you guys are going to laugh when I say it, but I saw a picture the other day and I wanted to show it to you, but I can't find it right now. But I saw a picture of this deck and some boy was jumping off the deck into the water. And it made me think of episode 19. And remember, I talked to you about electric shock drowning. And that's when there's a short in the current. And you go swimming in, uh, in the water. And there's a short in the water and you get electrocuted. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness. I wonder if these people are aware of the dangers of electric shock drowning and after I read that article and after I talked to you guys about that it actually it bothered me for a couple of days because there are so many things that happen in this world and a lot of things we think are paranormal and they're really not they're honestly just accidents or carelessness and you know what another thing too with this young gentleman Chekhov from Star Trek that just passed away after a while, there's going to probably be all kinds of conspiracies and Illuminati and all this kind of stuff. Listen, I love a good conspiracy. But people, sometimes things really just happen. Every single thing that happens is not a conspiracy. Some things are and some things aren't. But I'll tell you what's a conspiracy Eddie Murphy welcomes his ninth child, and it's a girl. <laughs> so congratulations to Eddie Murphy on your baby girl. And the only thing that I would like to say about that is he might as well hurry up and have one more and make it an even ten. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our show for today. Thank you so much for watching. Many more shows to come. And as usual, I am so very grateful for everything. And I'm also grateful for you too. Oh, and check this out before I go. Nah, I'll tell you on the next episode. <laughs> you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Buy my book everywhere on my website, Angels Passing Through. And on that note, am I upside down? Am I right side up? On that note, we're going to get out of here with my favorite song. Ladies and gentlemen, have a fabulous, fabulous evening because you're fabulous. And I will see you next time on Find Out What's In Pink and Tussle Forest. Good night. <laughs>